the NFL Combine is on behind us as the workouts continue. But we only care about one position here, right? What do the wide receivers look like, man? Nah, there's more going on than just that. I think you should be surprised if the Eagles went corner in round one and waited to a wide receiver fell to them in round number two. However, I want to ask John McMullen this at JF McMullen. It's time for football at four. John McMullen, like all guests, up here be the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. And we see the talent at wide receiver. Now, we saw Henry Ruggs, and everybody's talking about him. In fact, there's the video of Doug Peterson, John, sitting there watching Ruggs won a 4 2 40, which means he's not getting to 21. But when Howie Roseman spoke the other day, did he insinuate that he wouldn't be afraid to move up? And if they did move up, would it be for a wide receiver that they really want? Yeah, he did, and it, it's been a, a bit of mixed signals from Howie because he's constantly stressed uh, how much stress that having only five picks in consecutive years has hurt the Eagles. And he also said and, and over the past two years, the Eagles haven't necessarily had the ammunition uh, to move up to get players they wanted, which – I find kind of ironic because they moved up two years in a row. They moved up uh, to get Andre Dillard uh, last year in the first round. They moved down, remember, the Lamar Jackson pick, but then they moved back up to get over the Cowboys um, to get Dallas Goddard. So, look, it's silly season, as we know. There's some mixed uh, signals. Um, it. it I don't think the Eagles are going to move up. I, I don't think they're going to mortgage uh, the future. I think they know they need bodies. Uh, and I lean more towards those that five and five, those two numbers, and the fact they've only had five draft picks in consecutive seasons. They need bodies. So if anything, uh, I would project them moving down because there's so many good receivers. Uh, but, you know, C.D. Lamb, Jerry Judy, uh, and and Henry Ruggs, they're not going to be there at 21. So you kind of started maybe, if you're lucky, getting the fourth receiver. And that's why I look at Jefferson from LSU for a number of reasons. One, Daniel Jeremiah brought him up, uh, and he's still very close with the Eagles' front office. Uh, so he's kind of plugged in when you talk about draft people you trust. When it comes to the Eagles, I trust him more than anybody else. He brought up that name for a reason. Uh, and then he kind of stamped himself hmm. as a first-round pick uh, yesterday because he ran a 4-4, four four and he's a lot faster than people thought he was. And uh, Daniel has compared him to Keenan Allen, so I, I think everybody would be happy with that type of production. Uh, and I, I don't see the Eagles moving up. Yeah, it's interesting because uh, I think there's a lot of names that are in this particular wide receiver class that it's almost like everybody will have their favorite guy, and I guess that starts to separate itself a little bit here. But when you start to look you know, through the guys in this draft class, they're very interesting. They all kind of have different skill sets and do different things. But Jerry Judy, C.D. Lamb, Henry Ruggs, T. Higgins, uh, K.J. Hamler, Justin Jefferson. You tweeted about Chase Claypool, who's a senior, um, and uh, Sinault from Colorado. Of that group, how many guys do you think are in the 21 range? Uh, I think four will go uh, probably before 21. So the Eagles might be on the fifth. They'll be on the fourth or fifth. Uh, Claypool, who, I, I mean, he's just, he's not a first round pick, but he just is so physically impressive. I mean, he's, from an athletic standpoint, he's the closest thing we've seen to Calvin Johnson since Calvin Johnson. He ran a 4 4 2 at 6 4 2 38, so basically 6 4 2 40, uh, which is phenomenal. And all his other numbers were in that level as well as being just off the charts. So uh, he's more of a raw guy, though, as far as his production. He's very productive in Notre Dame, but uh, he doesn't really play like he's 6'4", 240. Uh, he's had trouble getting off press covers and things like that. So you, you kind of have to uh, teach him uh, to, to play up to his size. 
So I, I don't think the Eagles need more uh, help, like, right now. So I don't think a guy like him is in play by any stretch of the imagination. And that's another reason why I think Jeremiah uh, hit the nail on the head with Jefferson, because he's he's probably the most polished receiver in the draft uh, from a guy ready to play uh, right now. Uh, so a, a lot of things point towards him and the Eagles. But, you know, other people are going to put that together too. Mm-hmm. And there's going to be other teams interested. So you have to see how things obviously break out. But you think about it, I, I mean, not everybody needs a wide receiver. So even though it's the deepest position in this draft, you're going to get value, not only in the first round, second round, even the third round, because uh, the Eagles could want multiple bodies at that particular position. And not every team needs a receiver, so certain guys are going to get pushed down the board. Yep, and uh, you know it's going to be interesting because you never know. Which last year they took a wide receiver that was a more uh, I don't know what to say big physical guy, but was not a burner. I mean, he was not a guy who has speed. There was a guy that was being compared to what they already had, Alshon Jeffrey. And you wonder if they won up and say, look, this year we are not letting um, you know the the guy slip past us, and that how he just bucks the trend. He gives you some hyperbole that we're going to go. And, uh, you know, take all these draft picks. We need to get younger. We need more bodies. He just says, to heck with it. I can't help myself. I got to get Carson a weapon. Yeah, and, and I think that's the case. But I do think everybody defaults to speed and say the Eagles need speed, speed, right. speed, speed. I, I mean, there are guys who can run that can't play receiver. Trust me. Oh, right. Uh, and so it's it like takes... the guy, uh, you know, uh, the guy out in Seattle last year. He, Dewey Metcalf was the guy who ran, and, you know, people weren't sure about him, and now look at him. So it's like what's, yeah, he's played well. what's hot one uh, year, it's like the next year, it's like, well, they got the guy last year, and that's why I see a guy like Claypool all of a sudden being like Mike Mabola. Yeah, and, and that's the danger uh, because he can get enamored with just – uh, the physical ability, and you do have to put it and, and marry it to the film and see how they've done as a player, see what they need to work on. Uh, because you mentioned Mike Mamula, he's the most famous in this town. I, I remember when I was covering the Vikings and they traded Randy Moss and they drafted a guy by the name of Troy Williamson who ran a 4-3-2. I think he was the seventh overall pick. Could just run like you wouldn't believe. Couldn't catch the football. Right. Just couldn't catch the football. Uh, we've seen the same thing to a lesser degree here with Nelson Aguilar. Nelson can run. I say this constantly. Nelson can run. He's probably top 10 receiver in this league from just a flat out speed standpoint. Mm-hmm. So that's, I, I think people forget that. They have that on their own team. It's about more than just speed. You got to be able to play the position as well. Yep. Uh, no, you're, you're at, I mean, I think, um, and if people don't understand, yeah, the problem with Nelson is yes, he can run. He just so uncoordinated. He can't track the ball. He can't maneuver himself to kind of, you know, get himself in the best position to catch the football when he gets that separation. Um, but there's a lot of guys in this that can, a lot of people think Judy and CD lamb are the best in there. And then Ruggs kind of blasted his way up there. You got Chenault, who is probably less known in these parts because he played on the West Coast uh, in the pack for uh, Colorado. Sorry, I blanked on that. So there's going to be a lot of intriguing offers here. And then you mentioned Jefferson. And, you know, if he's going to have to move up to get one of those guys, let me just ask you your opinion on which guy fits the best and that you would say, you know what, if I was Hallie, I too would be willing to move up if they can get this guy because he fits what they need best. Well, I do think Ruggs fits what they need best uh, in in the best-case scenario, but uh, you do have to weigh. Uh, and, and that's also uh, kind of understanding that, this team is probably not enamored uh, of Deshaun Jackson uh, as they, as many of the fans think. I, I, I think many of the fans think, well, they're just going to cross their fingers and hope uh, Deshaun's healthy. And then maybe you say the more well-rounded guy, Jefferson, uh, would be the better fit. Uh, but I'm not necessarily sure. In fact, uh, you know, the Eagles are upset at the way Deshaun Jackson handled 
uh, that situation. They recommended surgery. The doctors recommended surgery, both inside and outside. He decided to be headstrong and go in a different direction, essentially lost the entire season. Uh, so I don't think they're thrilled with him. Uh, so if he's not in the mix, I think it's rugs. I think if he is in the mix, and he might have to be, uh, because it's going to be tough to move on from both Alshon and Deshaun because that is a ton of dead money. It's already bad for Alshon, but then you had uh, Deshaun on top of it. Um, that would be very, very difficult to do. And, and that's why I, I sit there and I say, I think they're going to stand pat at 21. And I think the hope is that Jefferson is there, and that's that's a receiver they would be very, very happy to get. Um, 21 is their spot. They also have, what do they have, 10 overall picks? Yeah, and remember, that is a big part of this. And I think they would like to add to that rather than lessen to it, to be honest. Oh, I was going to say, because so, I was going to add, you got 10 picks, which means it sounds like you have maneuverability. I guess another question would be, who are candidates to be traded on draft day? Well, I, I, if you look at guys who I, I think from an Eagle standpoint, if you're talking about veteran players and moving them, I, I don't think there's a lot of, of potential trade aspects. Uh, really, that was more of last year. You look at a guy like Vitae. We talked about him at the trade deadline, but how, now he's a free agent. Um, Jason Kelsey, because of the nature uh, of of – what he has said, and he's taken things year by year. Uh, you, you almost have to keep uh, an Isaac Samalu who would have trade value because he might be – he's not only your starting left guard, he might be uh, the heir apparent at center uh, sooner rather than later because you never know what Jason's going to do. Uh, the Eagles would love to trade uh, all Sean Jeffrey. I think an underreported thing because nobody starts talking about Nobody stops talking about Alshon Jeffrey. They'd love to trade Sean Jackson, I think. I think they'd like to get him out of there. I, I just don't think it's it's viable. Um, and, and then if you look at the defensive side of the football, they got no safeties. They got to fix things with Malcolm. Uh, they got no linebackers. They already waved goodbye to Nigel Bradham. Uh, and they got no corners because Jalen and, and Ronald Darby uh, are – free agent. So, you know, could they trade Sidney Jones, Rasul Douglas, if they were, uh, say, spin them off for, for a Darius Slay type? Uh, because I think the Eagles are going to go heavy to fix the cornerback position on the free agent market and the trade market with Byron Jones being number one. Uh, but then if you start getting down to plan B or plan C, you know, maybe Detroit would like a cornerback, but I don't see much value with Sidney Jones or Rasul Douglas. So it's not a lot of names you look at and say this is valuable and you can spin this all for something valuable. Mm, all right. Uh, good stuff. From, uh, by the way, that's a pretty interesting comment. They'd love to trade Deshaun Jackson. Don't think it's viable, but there's maybe it's probably more viable to trade Jackson than, than Jeffrey. Uh, yeah, I do. But remember, uh, it, because – Obviously, the cap isn't nearly as bad, although it's significant. Uh, and at 33 years old, uh, coming off essentially a lost season, and then you bring in the other parts of it. And, and you know, Deshaun had a bit of a reputation uh, coming uh, out of here the first time uh, when the Eagles released him. And then coming back, the, the story, the narrative was he matured, he became a father, he understand situations and then things went down uh, the way they went down and again it's your body it's it's his right to not want to have surgery uh, but when everybody is advocating you have surgery as I said both inside and outside the organization and remember that the, the constant criticism <clears throat> this organization takes because of their medical staff, well, here's an instance where they were right, and they still end up looking bad because the player doesn't listen to them. So all I'm saying is, not saying the Eagles are trying to trade Sean Jackson. Right. I'm saying 
he's not on the solid ground that most of the fan base thinks he is, is my point. Um, that's interesting for another front, too, is because, you know, he was a great uh, weapon for at least one game for Carson Wentz. One game. <laughs> you would think that the front office would be kind of salivating to see those two reunite for another opportunity. Well, and you brought up Henry Ruggs. Well, if you want Henry Ruggs, and, and you know, that's the most popular name uh, from a fan perspective, probably because of what he ran. And I certainly think, you know, I brought up Daniel Jeremiah talking about Jefferson. Well, he called Ruggs a perfect fit for the Eagles, a a perfect fit, just like me, doesn't think he'll be available. Uh, But let's say they do want to trade up, and let's say they do earmark him as the perfect fit. Well, if you bring in Henry Ruggs, you don't need Deshaun Jackson. Why would you need Deshaun Jackson? That's true. Uh, Although it would be fun, (laughs) right? I mean, wouldn't that be fun? You'd be having people's heads spinning on on what you would do with all that speed on the field. Well, yeah, partially, but we've seen the Eagles in the past, and they've had struggles offensively with redundancy. Uh, Golden Tate, if you go back to him, they don't necessarily – in other words, they don't see similar skill sets and say, well, let's take advantage of these similar skill sets. They play one guy and they don't play the other guy because they want the traditional X, they want the traditional Z, and the traditional slot receiver. Mm -hmm. So I've seen no evidence uh, that the Eagles will uh, be malleable in those types of circumstances. Now, perhaps when you talk about that type of talent level, they would have to be. But again, I've seen no evidence that they would do something like that. They have shown Doug Peterson and his offense, they don't do that. So until I see them do that, I find it very hard to believe they're going to do that. A um, couple quickies. Um, had Mosher on from the Combine earlier. Those guys reported on the uh, Inside the Birds podcast. Uh, I don't know if it was their report or not, but both basically saying – um, that it's uh, pretty accurate that the Eagles have solid interest in Byron Jones. Would you uh, subscribe to that as well? Yeah, I just mentioned that. I mean, that's <laughs> that is a thing from everybody. I'm not in Indy, but everybody texting me from Indy. Yeah, the Eagles are in that mix. It's pretty clear that's their plan A. It's pretty uh, evident that's the player they want to fix the cornerback position. Now, the problem is, that's the best cornerback on the market. Uh, so, A, he's going to get overpaid. B, there's going to be a lot of teams bidding. Uh, but it, it makes sense from a number of different angles. Uh, number one, obviously, the Eagles need a vast improvement at that particular position. That's been one of the best outside corners in football. And, and the second part is you're taking him away from your main division rival as well. Uh, So it makes sense on so many levels. Uh, But when you're in that type of level, when you're in that top tier free agency, you got to understand you're going to have to overpay. And we'll see if the Eagles, how high they want to go. All right. Uh, He also said he believes the Eagles will be more active in free agency than they have in a while. We talk a lot about the team that wins the offseason. Typically, it means their, their mindset is that we're not a good football team. Yeah, I mean, typically, but how he had explained this, and I think he's been pretty honest, okay. and, he, and he said he, he shifted back to sort of the 2016-2017 mentality. Think Brandon Brooks, think Rodney McLeod. When you're signing guys coming off their first contract, so they're 25, 26 in that range, and they could be part of your team for four or five years versus uh, a lot of one-year deals with veteran players uh, when you think you're on the cusp of the Super Bowl. So the Eagles are shifting back to their old free agency thought, and I do think they want those younger players, guys coming off their first contract, and they want them to be here. They they want to add to the core. So it's not about Chris Long anymore or Patrick Robinson. It's about Brandon Brooks-type free agent. Which is a bad what thing. the Eagles are hoping. No, it's not a bad thing, and especially if you get it right, like they got it right with Brandon Brooks. It's a bad thing if you get it wrong. You know, interesting because I, I think Jones is a very good player. He's certainly better than anybody the Eagles have. 
But I always point to this, especially in this town, in Philadelphia. Man, when he gets that money, they are going to expect Deion Sanders. <laughs> what uh, do you mean? Byron Maxwell to... handled it perfectly. Exactly. Same <laughs> type of thing. They're going to expect a top-tier and Let me tell you, John, you know as much as I do, it doesn't help that you played for the Cowboys. For fair or unfair, no. it doesn't help. It does not help, especially when things uh, when you get beat. So they're going to expect you know, Richard Sherman in his prime, Patrick Peterson in his prime, and I don't think he's that type of player, but he's going to get paid like that type of player, and that's going to be the expectation. So I, I'm a little hesitant, but Jeff is absolutely right. Everybody in this league knows the Eagles are in uh, on Byron Jones, and we'll see if it works out. Uh, this just came across my eyes. I don't know if you saw this before, and it's not 100% de- definite, but the uh, Arizona, I was about to call them the Phoenix Cardinals, the Arizona Cardinals will play uh, a game at uh, Mexico City this year, and one of the opponents that will be on that list include the Philadelphia the Eagles. Eagles. It's uh, either the Seahawks, Niners, Rams, Bills, Redskins, Eagles, uh, that would be uh, they have a road game at Arizona this year, so there is a chance the Eagles could play at Arizona's uh, at uh, Mexico. Yeah, and and Jeffrey Lurie uh, enjoys those international games, so uh, the Eagles wouldn't be adverse to it. They also haven't don't have the greatest history uh, in Arizona, so they probably wouldn't uh, mind from that perspective uh, playing in Mexico City. Um, would certainly be an interesting uh, game if the Eagles do get it. Uh, high altitude, you're going to be hearing a lot about that if they do get it. Um, uh, but they're certainly in the mix, no question about that. Yep, and, I, and, and I'm looking at the teams that are on there. I mean, you got the Seahawks, that's a division game, 49ers division game, Rams division game. Maybe you don't want a division. If you're the Arizona Cardinals, you might say, look, I don't want to play a division game on a neutral site. Give us the Bills, Redskins, or Eagles. Um, it seems like yeah, it's you're only. You're probably 100% right. And yeah. then you start talking about who will well, draw. Redskins are going to be, yeah. Who exactly. will draw? The, the Eagles will draw to Mexico City. Let's uh, bring you know, let's bring them down here. You're exactly right. And and that will play into it. And and. You know, the Bills have a very – I don't think people realize they have a very strong fan base. They do. As well, the Redskins obviously are, are, are down times, and, and they're probably not in the mix. So it, it's not as many teams as you think, and it's there's a very good chance the Eagles will be playing there. Yeah, the way I read it, if that's accurate, that they don't want to play a division game there. Uh, and a lot of the games have not been – you know, this year it was the Chiefs played – who did the Chiefs play down there this year? Um Man, I'm trying to remember. I don't remember the Chiefs being there. They played the Rams. Was that the Rams game, or was that supposed to be the game that got canceled last year? Oh, it was the – they played the Chargers. The Chiefs played the Chargers this year. Um, so that would be a division game. So who knows? I don't know. But uh, if you're the, the Arizona Cardinals, you might say, I don't want to give up a home uh, division yeah, in game. In theory, you wouldn't want to give up a, a home division game. Correct. Certainly. Now, there are times when, you know, you're so bad, you're not in it, it doesn't matter. And we'll see, Arizona obviously very early in the process doesn't uh, project to be that good of a team again. Uh, but who knows, you can turn around things quickly uh, in the NFL. So uh, it, it's interesting to think about it, still a long way to go. Sure. Uh, schedule generally comes up in, in April. Uh, so we should know by then, but uh, Eagles are certainly in that uh, category, and there's uh, a chance, and I think people would be really, really happy if they did get to play down there. Just an interesting environment, and obviously we know how this fan base travels. John McMullen, of course, football at four, has the weekend to kind of ponder it all, and then we'll be back on Monday, more draft, free agency, a step closer, a lot to get into the Sports Bash, always talking football at four here on the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. John, have a great weekend, my man. All right, you too, Mike. Thanks. Johnny Mac, like all guests, appeared via the Boardwalk Honda Hotline.